Okay, so how's your take on how Trump's, uh, Trump's politics are shaping our world today? Well, my take is very negative. I was, after all, appointed by um, President Obama and I served for three years in uh, Brussels before the European Union. Very negative for many reasons, but principally because his relationship with the EU, I think, is rather poor for many reasons, but one of them is on the trade front. Uh, he's taken actions which I think could lead us to serious trade frictions with the European Union. The second is I don't think he considers the European Union and Europe as significant partners of the United States on a lot of global and regional issues where we should be working with our allies, including the European Union. So I have a negative view. What are the consequences of him not considering the, U the European Union as allies or as partners? Well, the, the, the consequence is that we are less likely to successfully address those challenges. One of them obviously is climate change, where he has a different view from his predecessor. But there are many other issues. There's the Iran issue, of course, but there's also humanitarian aid uh, to the third world. Uh, it's law enforcement cooperation. It's all the work we were doing to stabilize regions of the world which are unstable, like the Middle East, like the Balkans, and many other areas. So it means we are less likely to successfully address those issues. Is Mr. Trump doing anything well so far? Well, he succeeded on a major piece of legislation, which was the tax reform, which many presidents before him tried and failed to do. I think it was the wrong piece of legislation because it actually gives to uh, mostly the wealthy and very wealthy the benefits of the tax cuts, and it will make uh, inequalities in the United States even greater. But he succeeded on tax reform, and he has succeeded as well on deregulation in some areas where, frankly, we needed to deregulate because we over-regulated. So in those areas, he's done, I think, what the business community has wanted him to do. Uh, also, I think there is a silver lining, a positive effect for Europe, because Europe clearly now sees an opportunity to step up and be a leader on a lot of European, a lot of sorry, global issues. Climate change is one of them, but not only. On trade, Europe is now becoming more active than it was in signing free trade agreements. And that's due to the fact that Trump has withdrawn the United States from those areas. You mentioned before that uh, the U.S. deficit is going to go up and maybe jobs will not come back as Mr. Trump uh, promised to his voters. So are there any immediate uh, challenges that the U.S. could address? Well, uh, as I said in my talk, that this will put a lot of pressure on him, uh, even in the short term, because the trade deficit has gone up, even in one year, has gone up. And it's going to go up even more, as the dollar is likely to strengthen, because interest rates will go up. And uh, the deficit will increase uh, by more than a trillion dollars. We're going to go from, as I mentioned, from 77% of debt to GDP to over 100% of debt to GDP. And this will also result in some countries who are currently buying our U.S. Treasury bonds uh, to question whether the United States is as safe and as an investment as it was in the past. Because if we start blowing up the deficit and making uh, our, our budgets even more unbalanced, can they continue to rely on the United States as being a safe place to invest their money? You have also a wide experience in, in European affairs. Um, what do you think about the Brexit? Because you are also very pessimistic about it. I've been pretty pessimistic about it, but um, first I, I hope that reason prevails because Brexit was not good for Europe. Whether it's good for the UK is for the British to decide. <laughs> but it's certainly not good for Europe and it wasn't good for the United States. Um, there's been a lot of movement recently in terms of whether the UK should stay in the customs union. Jeremy Corbyn, leader of the Labour Party, has recently said that the UK should stay in the customs union. And there are a number of Tories, Conservative Party members, who are also saying that is the only way for Ireland to avoid a hard border. 
And that's really the critical issue, <clears throat> avoiding a hard border in Ireland. So I think there will be now a debate about whether the UK could have a version of the customs union that Turkey has, but with some improvements. A decaffeinated Brexit. A decaffeinated Brexit, but that would mean, to be clear, on the positive side, there would be no tariffs on industrial goods, right? There would be no uh, tariffs either way into the UK or into Europe. Very little in terms of financial services. Uh, it would avoid a hard border. However, it would also mean that those who want the UK to strike free trade deals with third countries won't be able to do it. So you're in a customs union, you can't, be, you can't start signing free trade deals with other countries. But it would be, it would address a number of the critical issues right now on the table. So I hope they take this seriously. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador.